Before the murmurs died away, the major d came back to say that all was ready for dessert in his pinstripe suit and plum red shirt. He waved the waiting waiters in. Amongst the crowd, their patience thin, for the thought of sweets did make them swoon like lovers on their honeymoon. Platters overflowed with prunes, a wobbly, bobbly chocolate mousse, cream caramel, and macaroons, and port wine jelly, dark maroon, fairy cakes, and custard creamed, spotted dick. And pudding steamed, roly polies and blancmange, decorated with bonbons, brandy snaps and gingerbread, profiteroles lay on a bed of lime sorbet and butterscotch. Oh, what a delectable hotchpotch! With mouths of water salivating. The crowd were all so tired of waiting. As one, they all rose to their feet and made a dash for their favourite treat. Amidst the rush, the push and shoves, a waiter lost his pure white gloves, mistaken for confectionery, devoured and smothered in blackberry sauce. But that was just the start of this free for all. This a la carte madness, greed, and gluttony that was such a hideous sight to see. The major d, he was knocked down, and in a sea of brandy, custard drowned. The waiters, one and all, fell to, trampled by the hullabaloo. I was a fly upon the wall. I can tell you, I was shocked, appalled at the fate that did befall. I was filled with sadness and with gall. Although I knew some people were worse than beasts, crazy with mad cow's disease, I never thought to see the day when the sight of ghettos and sorbet would drive someone. So mad, insane, to do something so inhumane. I tell you, I felt sick at heart at everyone who played a part in this Saturnalian bacchanal, a hurricane anarchical. I hope I never live to see another day that greed and avarice outweigh good manners. Patience, grace, and style of humanity, Gentile. With the food all ate and the plates licked clean, not a crumb was left, not e'en a bean. I had to tell myself this was not a dream, for all their clothes and the floor too clean. I dared not think what happened to the major d and his waiters who. Fell beneath the raging throng, then poof, like that, they were all gone. All that was left was a piece of thin, plum red fabric fluttering in the wind, caught on the edge of the podium, a reminder ghastly of a scene so grim. I hear the orchestra softly fade, calling the crowd back to the play. But I'm so choked up, I can barely breathe. I blame this atrocity on the opera comique, for it amuses itself at others' expense. Ever it thrives on devilment. It always has, perhaps it ever will, for its evil intentions be grist for the mill. It wields a power to manipulate, to sublimate. And obliterate all decency from people's minds to turn them into Frankenstein's monsters made from all that's kind into ghouls with an axe to grind. Gone be all peaceful thoughts and dreams to be replaced with nightmarish screams. Ah! How 
did the opera comique become this way? Wreaking havoc will hell to pay, for it hasn't always been like this. Once it was not so prejudiced against fun and laughter with joyful mirth. Its reputation held such worth where each performance made you split your sides and left the theatre starry-eyed with hopes and dreams that could come true that one day you could rendezvous on the boards and tramp them ever on from dusk until the rising sun broke through the clouds to shine upon the opera comique where so much fun was had by everyone who came to laugh and to be entertained. Perhaps another day will dawn where the opera comique will be reborn and a chance for it to be transformed into the wonder it could have always been. Oh, the oh, the opera, the opera comique. Oh, the oh, the opera, the opera comique. Oh, 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 oh. The Opera Comic